If your puppy or dog is anxious in the car the way Sophie was when she was little, I hear your frustration. In today's video, we'll look at some of the ways to help your dog overcome their car anxiety. And we'll also touch on another issue which may underlie this kind of anxiety and what you can do about it. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Joanna along with Sophie. This is my Golden Doodle Diary, a channel about all things Golden Doodles, Groodles, Doodles. If you like this kind of doggy chat, consider subscribing. It makes a huge difference. And if you get value from this video, do leave a like. We may be prepared to train our dogs in things like how to sit, stay and so on, but sometimes dealing with simple life situations like hopping into the car to go somewhere needs to be taught too. I mean, who'd have thought? But considering that many golden doodles have a tendency to be anxious, it's actually not that much of a stretch to see this happen, especially in puppies. It's actually one of the first things I found out about Sophie when I met her. When she was flown in as a puppy, I came to collect her at the airport. Before going home, I took her outside to let her stretch her legs and go potty. She was wagging her tail, giving kisses and looked very happy. Then we got in the car to drive home. She immediately changed her happy demeanour and was restless and vocal, despite the fact my neighbour had her on her lap. So I realised early on that this is a behaviour that needed to be worked on. Obviously, there are different degrees of anxiousness in reaction to going somewhere in the car. Some of the symptoms might include panting, barking, restlessness, drooling, shaking, and even vomiting and diarrhea. Now, I'll mention here that if a dog vomits, it might be the result of high anxiety about the fact of being in the car, which creates nausea, which is made worse by the motion of the car or it could mean the dog gets plain old motion sickness from being in a moving car, which in turn makes it anxious to be in the car because it's feeling ill. It can be a vicious cycle, whatever the originating cause. Still, there is an approach I use successfully on Sophie, which could help either way. And if the main underlying issue behind the anxiety is motion sickness, a little later in the video, I'll share some natural remedies you may like to try on your puppy or your dog. So when it comes to lessening the anxiety, what I did is to break down the elements of a car trip into tiny increments. I put these into practice as a kind of behavioural training exercise rather than insisting on straight out having to go somewhere with the hope that the car anxiety lessens over time. Obviously, I had no option but to drive Sophie home from the airport that very first time. But once she was home, a few days in, I began some incremental exercises so she could remain at or below her car anxiety threshold. So equipped with a car, some kibble, and my calmest, most soothing voice, I set to work on project car desensitization. I thought I'd do a little reenactment of those training exercises for you. Obviously, I now only have access to the grown-up Sophie, who is no longer anxious about car rides. When I did this for real, she looked more like this. So here are the five incremental steps I took. I firstly let Sophie inside the parked car with the engine off, allowing her to sniff around and explore. At the start, she was a bit unsure and I spoke to her and gave her a few bits of kibble. Just regular kibble rather than high value treats because I didn't want her too focused on me or the food. I praised her as she explored. Each session took only about two to three minutes. The second little progression once I saw she was comfortable was to keep the car parked and to switch the engine on. As I switched on the ignition, I gave her kibble at the same time so she'd have a slight distraction and not be alarmed by the car sound. I'd then switch the engine off while she continued to explore and switch it back on and off a few more times. Again, I'd do this for maybe two to three minutes a session, a few times throughout the day until she seemed comfortable with this. The next step was to move the car a few feet forward and stop. This was so she got the sensation of the car in motion. 
Again, I observed her, then moved on to the next step when she was ready. So then I began to drive short distances, mostly just around the block and back to nowhere in particular. As before, I praised her in a calm voice. If she looked anxious, I'd stop the car and revert to an earlier step where she did look comfortable. Then the last part, which was my goal, was lengthening the drives to go to wherever I actually needed to go. Now as to how quickly your dog progresses through the steps depends on how strong its car anxiety is. Just as I did with Sophie, observe your dog's reaction and progress it at its own pace. And even if the dog is feeling anxious in the car because they're feeling queasy due to motion sickness, it's still beneficial to slowly condition its body through these five steps. But if you like, you may also want to incorporate some natural remedies to make it easier like giving it a rescue remedy for dogs, or add a bit of cooled peppermint tea to its water. Or you could put one drop of lavender, chamomile or peppermint essential oil on a tissue, waft it around a bit and keep it inside the car. Alternatively, you can get motion sickness tablets from your vet, especially if you're planning a long trip before your dog is quite ready for it. And before I finish, here are a few bonus quick tips regarding car trips I'd recommend. Firstly, feed your dog about two hours prior to the trip so it doesn't travel on a full stomach. Secondly, stop off regularly for potty breaks. And thirdly, keep your car at a cool, comfortable temperature and allow good airflow. Now, if you'd like to get some handy care tips about doodle dog ownership, you might like to check out my video right here. Thanks for watching, do subscribe and like and see you soon for the next video. Bye!